For the whole series, but primarily games 5 and 6, when Kawhi Leonard was gone, the LA Clippers were able to dissect the Utah Jazz defense through the 5-out offense that left the Jazz without any answers. This prompted a discussion that Rudy Gobert got exposed and didn't deserve the Defensive Player of the Year for the 2021 season since he tends to struggle in the postseason. Today I explore if Gobert truly got exposed in the Utah Jazz system against the Clippers, but before we do that, it's important to explain why the media believe he deserved the award. Although defensive analytics aren't the best measure at evaluating defenses since it depends on who's on the floor, they still show things that are important to the game. The two most important are Gobert's points per possession when guarding pick and rolls and isolations against guards. According to Second Spectrum, when Gobert is guarding the pick and roll, Opposing teams are only scoring 0.851 points per chance, which is lowest among the 65 eligible centers. And when you look at the film, you can see why. With someone who stands 7'2 and a 7'9 wingspan, he uses all of it to disrupt passing angles and has good reactions, especially when the pass is being made to recover to the big man. Because of Rudy, the Jazz defensive system was based around drop coverage, and they learned to master that the whole year. Does that sound familiar to another team? Since Gobert is really good at stealing off driving lanes himself, the rest of the Jazz roster could stay attached to three-point shooters, and they were trained to do that the whole year which helped the Jazz get the first seed in the West. On isolations, guards could only score .799 points per possession, which was fifth in the league. He's been able to play higher up in the isolations and use his lane to bother shots. When guards try beating him off the dribble, he can use his size to recover and force tougher shots near the rim. So what happened in the playoffs? Well first, the Clippers are one of the most versatile teams in the league. They have a lot of guards and wings that can create their own shot and have a front court that can downsize or go big. And in the playoffs, they didn't use the pick and roll against Gobert or try isoing him as much. Instead, they used a 5 out offense and had Gobert spaced out to the perimeter. This could work since everyone in the starting lineup shoots over 39% from 3 including Terrence Mann, even though it was only 1.4 attempts a game. And this shouldn't have shocked the Jazz since the Clippers implemented this in the final game between them in the regular season and had the same success. And Ty Lu even pointed it out during the in-game interview. Talk to you about it at halftime. Whenever we touch the paint, Rudy's coming. We're going to get open shots. And so I thought in that first half, we dribbled, dribbled, dribbled. We didn't move the basketball. But in the second half, we attacked. They helped. Team man got a lot of corner threes, just like we've been game planning for. The reality is that it's not really Gobert's fault. Unlike Anthony Davis and Joel Embiid, the Jazz are a small team who don't have great defensive guards or wings, besides Royce O'Neal, which usually means there will be a lot of dribble penetration, and that means Gobert has to come and help. On a lot of these shots, the wings and guards should be rotating to the open man. For example, here as Batum gets the ball, Bogdanovich needs to rotate and so does Mitchell, but he stays on Morris and it's wide open. When the Clippers tried ISO and Gobert, he did a relatively good job, especially on Paul George. Paul George tried shaking Gobert multiple times to no avail. And in games 5 and 6, he tried ISO and Gobert 4 times and he never scored once. But Reggie Jackson and Terrence Mann had more success, particularly because they have quicker foot speed and were not afraid to challenge him, including this dunk. George draws a crowd. Mann doesn't take the 3. Drives it. Oh, he finishes! Terrence Mann! Where Gobert got more exposed was on the offensive end. Because of his limitations, especially his struggles with taking advantage of smaller players, the Clippers can sacrifice size to take away the Jazz's biggest strength, which is Gobert's paint protection. The Jazz didn't even look for him when he had guards on him like Reggie Jackson or Terrence Mann, and instead decided to ISO which made their offense really inefficient. Here, this should have been a dunk for Gobert, but Mitchell decides to drive himself and gets fouled instead. And here, after Gobert gets the offensive rebound, he misses an easy layup against Kennard. Even though he got fouled, this should have been a basket. And the other way he could have impacted the game was through offensive rebounds. However, with the heavy isolation the Jazz were playing for much of the second half of games 5 and 6, this threw everyone out of their rhythm and he stopped crashing the class like he could have. You can see Ingles telling him, you have to sit in there. There was a stretch in the third where he got four consecutive offensive rebounds and scored off of them, which he is capable of doing almost every time down the floor. And most importantly, if Gobert was capable of taking advantage of smaller guards, opposing teams would be forced to play a traditional center to help out in the paint, and this would take away the Jazz's biggest Achilles heel. What we've learned in the past few years is that the regular season is all about efficiency. 
Against 27 to 28 teams, the Jazz will have no problem because they won't be facing teams that can switch and also shoot from all over the floor. However, in the playoffs, it's all about matchups. And with the shooting talent we have today, the Jazz are going to have problems if Quinn Steiner doesn't figure out the five out offense against teams like the Nets, Clippers, and to a lesser degree, the Lakers, if they put AD at the five. So I hope you guys got a better understanding of what happened to Rudy Gobert and the Jazz against the Clippers. With the offseason now in full effect, I have a couple of different ideas including doing some throwback legendary games. If you have a video idea, I have a google form in the description. Besides that, if you want more NBA content, follow my Instagram at the Coaches Report and my Twitter. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.